You're still watching Ways. Now, on January 27th each year, the United Nations remembers the Holocaust that affected many people of Jewish um, origin during World War II. This day is called the International Day of Commemoration in memory of the victims of Holocaust. Now, it also commemorates when the Soviet troop liberated the Nazi concentration and death camp in Poland on January 27, 1945. Holocaust survivors and various leaders make their voices heard on this day. Many of them speak speak publicly about the Holocaust or their experiences around the event, its aftermath and why the world should never forget what happened in Europe in the 1930s and 1940s. So we remember them as well today on Waze. Uh -huh. And they were killing people anyhow. <laughs> when I read it, I was just, whew. Thank God I, they, they, I didn't come in some, <laughs> some um, errors. <laughs> That's all I can say. But let me come to, I don't know who I'll come to first. Um, let me come to Tammy. Uh, or Jennifer, rather. Let me come to Jennifer. What did you find for us in the news? Hmm. The court admits more evidence in Naramali's fraud trial. Okay. So apparently, um, Naramali has a standing case that has been on since 2019. Mm -hmm. And he was arraigned on um, 11 counts of money laundry and internet fraud. So a new evidence was presented at the court. And um, his lawyer, his lawyer objected to it, but the judge who was sitting on that day said um, he overruled the judgment or he overruled his um, appeal. His something. appeal, yeah. And he said that the um, the evidence was admissible in court, but um, he was supposed to he planned to move it to a new trial date, but the date that he presented, Naramali's lawyer was nowhere to be found. He will. Yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't in court that day, and they had to adjourn the trial to a new day. date. So apparently, he's still being charged to court. So until then, before we know if he's actually guilty oh, or no. not. But they asked him, I think um, in 2019, when they asked him then, he said he was not guilty. Hmm. But now that there is new evidence, it means hmm. that the case is still on. You know, I had a very interesting strategy meeting today, very long strategy meeting with um, some, someone, you know, that's trying to rub minds, consult for us and all of that. The guy was talking about um, the most booming industries right now in Nigeria. And mm. this is backed up with data, backed up with data and fact. Mm. It's um, fraud, that this Yahoo Yahoo mm -hmm. and runs. Mm. Those are the most booming Industry. <laughs> industries right now in fact when he broke it down for me i said oh my god you know he with data and confirmed facts you know i say hey so all of a sudden crime is so juicy to do it is it is very juicy they, they also even mentioned that when they um when they searched his apartment or his house they found two id cards that did not belong to him mm. the um, credit cards rather mm. and they bared um american names whoa so they were not even nigerian names they didn't belong to him so how did they find its way to <laughs> his house two cards that bought different names uh, americans yeah. oh okay um, tell me you wanted to come in Oh, well, I did plan to, but I was, I'm just going to say that, you know, we usually say that I, I, I stay on the part of the law that says that um, everyone is really innocent or to prove you guilty. Yeah. So when a case is in court, we just say that let the case have its, let it take its full course and let's see what comes out of it. Because, you know, sometimes it looks like there's some evidence and then you find that the other party is able to bring up other facts to show that even if an evidence is admissible it doesn't go to prove that the person is guilty and this is actually fraud is criminal it is not just a civil case it's a criminal matter mm -hmm. so um let's see how this case goes in court we trust that we take the full course of justice and then we'll eventually see the result of it but tell me this let's just follow the proceedings in court Tell me, this one that you are a lawyer, I'm happy you are, you are helping us to not be emotional with the conversation. Let us <laughs> wait. But I'm, I, I want to ask you a question. This lawyer not showing up in court, you know, is there a penalty for that? Okay. So, well, there are many reasons, for example, for a lawyer not to show up in court. Mm. You know, so for example, I, I could just, what if it is possible that, um, I hope this is not what happened. But what if it is possible that the lawyer was on his way and he had an accident? Okay. There, there are too many things. Usually, if, if it's a consistent habit of a lawyer, a lawyer... Oh. 
We're losing Tammy. <laughs> We're losing her. Okay, we'll try to reconnect with her. And uh, her story was supposed to be on uh, NIN. But my story is actually very interesting. I saw something. Um, maybe we'll try to reconnect with her yeah. before I finish my story. Hopefully, we'll get her back. WhatsApp status. I woke up this morning. Mm. And I just saw on my status, I saw WhatsApp now, uh, what's it called, projecting status. Say so WhatsApp is now on status. We'll let you know about the new features and the updates here. So now say one thing that, is, that isn't new is our commitment to your privacy. At least they are, <laughs> they are showing us that nobody's um, monitoring <laughs> us. And they said WhatsApp can read or listen to your personal conversations as they are end-to-end -end encrypted, like we already know. Then stay tuned for more details with the gift box. I'm wondering, okay, now. So the reason I actually chose this story, you know, because we've been talking about, um, there was a time we had a guest that talked about e-commerce yeah. and all of that. You do not know how powerful your WhatsApp status is yes. in terms of, because those people, first of all, on your phone, especially when you are like contact only, can see your mm -hmm, WhatsApp mm -hmm. status. You know, those are the closest people to you. I, I know several times that I've posted some things on my WhatsApp status. I mean, when we ordered the barbecue on my, um, uh, which day was it when we ordered barbecue, the ribs and all of that, I put it on my status. Do you know how many people reached out to me? You know, the, the client got a lot of sales. So imagine if we start to truly take our status, our status like shares. a business platform, especially with all of these things going on, and we're saying that, oh, digital technology and all of that. People do not really pay attention, but WhatsApp is actually yeah, a massive business tool. It is, actually. Yeah, it's it a is. massive business it tool. Is. And because those people are close to you, they get to immediately say, ah, oh, ah, please, oh, I need this thing. So you are even, like a connector. Even, even old contacts that you've forgotten about, and they check your status. Oh, you have this. Oh, mm -hmm. you do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, how are you? Long time. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. But there was something that struck me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they said that they're committed to your privacy. Uh, <laughs> we don't listen to your conversation. <laughs> and I feel like it's what has been going um, around, especially about um, Instagram. Because there's this uh, funny thing about Instagram. You're having a conversation about buying a particular thing. Next thing. The next thing ads. Is that particular mm, mm -hmm. Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> It's so true. So, so I feel like that's what um, um, WhatsApp is trying to hammer on. Mm -hmm. I get that, but because yeah, WhatsApp that was comments? trending on Twitter, they were trending, and you know it was uh, somebody. Did, I mean, they did a very caricature um, image of Facebook and WhatsApp. They say, ah, we we do not uh, what's going. We don't monitor you because <laughs> the truth is, I mean, this thing happens all the time. There was a time I I wanted to get something uh, like you know we're very hairy in my family, so I was telling my sister instead of all this stress all the time or the painful waxing and all of that. Mm. I I saw something on Adriana's post. Uh, it was a laser, kind of handy laser, whatever, yeah. for hair removal and all. So I sent it to my sister. After I did that, if you see the number of sponsored as I was just coming, 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 coming. <laughs> exact same thing. I need, I need an explanation for that. And I'm sure a lot of us actually <laughs> have questions. So that's where we, when we had um, Shol, uh, Shola Moshola, he was talking about AI. Mm. So it, I think it's just data. They collate that. So once you click on that thing, you know, it is registered. So if you notice, for instance, you're shopping on Amazon. If you notice, when you buy something, they'll tell you, oh, there's a, uh, if since you, you're you buying this, you yeah, might likely like this, this. Yeah. right? No, no, they'll say you might likely like mm -hmm. this. And truthfully, when you like that one, they will suggest another one another again one. to you. That, that's, so they follow your, to, to understand your customer behavior. I get that. <laughs> I get that. I know that there are people that have liked a particular post. Mm -hmm. And after a while, Instagram gives you sponsored ads that look like what you've liked previously. Mm -hmm. But I was having a conversation with a friend. We have not checked. We have not liked anything. Mm. We had the conversation. She went on um, on Instagram. Immediately, she called me. That, oh, this thing that we're just talking about, Instagram just showed me. Ah, okay. Somebody's monitoring <laughs> us. Exactly. So, <laughs> somebody's monitoring us. We, uh, do we have to be back now? Oh, uh, I don't think... Oh, okay, can quickly. Yeah, can you quickly take your story, quickly? Okay, yes, great. So, um, the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Dr. Issa Pantami, the news says that the, he has prevailed on members of the NIMC chapter of the Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria so that they will shelve their planned strike. You remember that they gave a 21-day ultimatum and said they were going to go on a strike yeah. Yeah. if their grievances were not resolved. But the news today says that they would be holding on with that as the government is promising to look into their grievances already. So it looks as if they would likely not go on the strike any well, longer. Okay. 
Okay. I'm happy to hear that, but I'm also hearing that um, it's like uh, they are also trying to commission the telcos now to make the registration of the NIN easier. So that would reduce the burden on oh, NINC, yes, yeah. Yes. Because if telcos take up the registration of the data and mm -hmm. everything and all that, it will really, really reduce Use the pressure it. It on them. It becomes much easier. Yes, that, and that's what they should have done since. Just found easier ways. Because we've already gone to do our biometrics with telcos before. So just find a way to synchronize the, de the, the data. It just goes to show that sometimes when they make decisions, they don't... Think, so. think about yeah, they don't it very think well. So. Yeah, they, don't. they don't break it down to look at the pros and the cons. They just yeah. run with it. Absolutely. All right, so today we're not discussing all of this. Oh, can I, I was saying something earlier. Go ahead. Okay, I was saying something earlier before the network decided yeah. to Quite, misbehave. Go ahead, so I was, you were talking about how that lawyers who don't do their um, work would be punished or if they could be fined yes. or something like that. Yeah. And then I was saying that, like, under the RFPC, a lawyer owes his client the duty to be devoted to his work. Yeah. And that's very important. So, for example, if a lawyer is not doing this, you could report the lawyer to the Legal Practitioner Disciplinary Committee and he could, the lawyer could go as far as, you know, like, his license being revoked, facing a committee and being punished. So, mm -hmm. there are there, there's punishment yeah, punishments you know, for those for kinds of, not, yeah. you know, doing what he's supposed to be doing. Okay. But I was just saying that, you know, in, in such a situation, in this particular situation, for example, you really can't tell. It's one matter. In other situations, not this one, for example, it may be possible that the lawyer has not, um, they say he has not perfected my brief. Mm. Means that, or oh, the client has not perfected my brief. Oh, maybe sometimes the client hasn't even paid. Yeah. Not this one, I'm just saying generally. Yeah. Or maybe something happened to the lawyer. So, there may be an excuse, but in a, a case where lawyer is willfully doing something that's against the client's case, trying to hurt him, then the client can take up a matter against his lawyer. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for that clarification, Tammy. That's why we love to have lawyers on the show. <laughs> we'll see you after the break as we discuss why we must all be identified as Nigerians. Stay with us. We'll be right back.